Welcome back to TF Custom Shaving Brushes Workshops. My name's Tony, how are we all? I see Sam's in there nice and early and there's probably two or three other ones in there as well. So um, welcome to the show. I'm going to be doing a, a nice relaxed stream tonight. Um, just going to be doing a little bit of casting tonight for a change. We've been uh, busy doing handles and brushes for the last um, God knows how many streams. So um, we're going to have a play with this uh, casting tonight, see what we can come up with. And then I'll be scheduling in. I've got another one scheduled in, I think, for another handle, which is the black one with the orange stripe. So that'll be done on Saturday morning. And then I'll be scheduling in a few other streams after that. But I think we're going to try and schedule in a couple more casting ones as well, just to give us a bit of a break from the handles. And um, yeah, we'll see how we go. So welcome back. Um, let me see who else is in the chat here. I'm just going to change screens for a minute, just to... Uh, Oh, Brett's in. How are you, buddy? <clears throat> so we've got Brett, we've got Sam back, back in the fold now as well. Welcome back, Sam. Um, I think you went well with all your exams you were, you were mentioned to me. So, um, yeah, hope that all goes good for you, buddy. Um, so I've got a bit of stuff around here. I've got, I made up some moulds today. It's just the uh, the tube moulds. So I've got four of them ready to go. We'll see how we go with them. I'm not really overly fussed about getting... Um, a lot of things done tonight. I just want it to be a nice relaxed stream tonight. Um, it's stinking hot here too, so um, I think we're, what is it, we're six o'clock now, or just after six, and it's still sitting about 27, 28, but the humidity's up through the roof, so um, it's stinking hot. I've just had the fan in here blowing full bore, just trying to cool the hot air down a little bit, get the hot air out of the shed here, but uh, the tin roof's probably still retaining a fair bit of heat, so, um, We'll see how we go. If I've got to put it back on again, I'll put it back on. But it is, it's a big industrial one, so it's pretty noisy, so I'd rather try and keep it off if I can for the stream. Um, music looks like it's just a little bit too loud. So we'll drop that down another, another one there. That should be better. <clears throat> yeah, so look, we've just got to think on uh, colours for this one now, because um, this is the piece of wood that we're going to be doing which has got, you know, spalting in it. I mean, it's been stabilised now, so it's pretty hard. And we've cleaned this one up. Um, but it's got a lot of holes in it. Now, what we're going to get when we turn it as a handle, nobody really knows until we actually turn it. So, um, you know, it's going to be a bit of a suck and see one. So we'll cast it. We'll put some colour in it tonight. We'll cast it. We'll put it in the pressure pot under pressure so that uh, everything, everything gets forced into the holes and bonds properly. And then we'll turn it into a handle in a future stream and we'll see how we go and, you know, see how it turns out. I mean, it could turn out as ugly as sin, but it could turn out looking okay. So, um, but we're just going to pick a colour and I want to try and keep it fairly natural. So I'm thinking maybe, um, I'm thinking maybe a green or maybe, a, maybe go something totally different and maybe go to a coppery bronzy colour or something like that. Um, I don't know what colour the wood's going to come up either once the wood's turned and, and got a, a finish put on it. Um, I don't know whether it's going to go dark, whether it's going to go light. I've got no idea really at this stage. So it's going to, like I said, it is going to be a bit of a suck and see one. Um, but at least this one will be the test trial one for the other half a dozen or five that I've got sitting over there waiting to be done. So um, this will be the first trial one. It's Like I said, it's got a few holes that go right through. Not a lot though, um, but we should be able to retain some of that shape in there with, with the resin. Um, so anyway, we'll see how we go with it tonight. That's the plans anyway. <clears throat> yeah, so Brett, are you on the road, buddy? Or are you parked up somewhere or are you on the road? So what I'll do is I'll get our resin sort of happening. Um, I'm just going to have a look for colours here because I, I really think I might even go a little bit of antique gold or something like that. Um, yeah, antique gold might be alright. We could maybe even put in a, um, a little bit of a brighter gold as well, just to give it a little bit of a splash, you know. 
um, here and there because we don't know where it's going to go once it goes into the mould. <clears throat> so we might do that. We might use a bit of antique gold, which is a real sort of darkish antique gold. Um, and then I've got some solar gold here. We'll put a little bit of solar gold. Yeah, there's still some in there. Um, so we'll put a bit of solar go gold in as well and we'll maybe just mix them in and let the resin just pour into the holes um, where it wants to go, you know. <clears throat> so let's get started. So we'll pour in some um, clear resin. <clears throat> so this was a fresh pot of resin. And I checked my measurements um, on these cups because we had an issue where I had a few moulds, a few castings that stayed a bit, um, a bit squidgy. Um, fortunately, they all managed to harden up once they had been in the UV, um, but they were a little bit squidgy for a while, and um, they would compress under pressure when I was putting them in the in the chucks and the lithe so I had to harden them up before I could actually turn them so um, <clears throat> I thought well I better check the mix on the cups but I've checked the mix on the cups tonight and the mix is good so it's not it's not the mix so I don't know what happened with those other ones I'm still at a bit of a loss and I don't know how the resin's going to go tonight either, from the fact that, um, I mean, I can see it's a lot thinner because of the heat. <clears throat> but I don't know how it's going to react tonight with the heat as well. I mean, I'd imagine that the, uh, the turning point for the resin will be much quicker tonight. Um, so it'll be quick work with the mixing of the colors and stuff, and then straight in the pressure pot before I was time to start gelling and curing. Oh, okay, no, my, that's fine, Brett. You're gonna be pretty busy, mate. That's all good. So we'll show them we've got about five in the stream. At this point. But anyway, we'll see how we go, so I'll switch between cameras every now and again just to give you some different viewpoints. I mean, at the moment it's on me, you're not really seeing the bench, but you can see the bench in the little picture and picture down the bottom right there. Um, but I have got the overhead shot as well, as long as I don't put my big ugly head in the way. So I think that'll be enough for mixing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour, actually I won't use those ones, I'll use some plain ones. And I'll only need the one. Now I may have too much resin here as well. So I've got a couple of spare cups here that I pour my excess into. Um, just get rid of some of the, the loose stuff off of that. That would all get turned off anyway. So if we, um, worst comes to worst and we've got too much. Because what I've got, I've got a funny feeling that when I put this timber in here, what I've got to do is I've got to actually make sure that I put it in the right way that um, the resin is going to be able to flow through some of the holes. Like these ones, if I go to the uh, if I go to this shot, see these ones don't go through the blank. So I really want to try and keep these ones to the top so that the resin will just fall into the holes. But all these ones sort of run that way through the blank. So I'm going to put that to the bottom so the resin will just slowly fill those voids up, hopefully. Um, and then these ones will get filled with just pouring the resin on the top. And then once we put it under pressure, the pressure will force all the resin in. Now, I have got a little bit of a buffer I've got a little bit of a, 
I've got about probably six, seven mil above the wood. So what I'll be doing is I'll be filling that completely up and then that'll give me a reservoir excess resin so that when we put it in the pressure pot and the pressure forces the resin into the, all the holes and cavities that we won't run out of resin. And if we do, then it just means that when we take it out of the pressure pot once it's cured, it'll just mean we're going to have to pour more resin on the top to fill up these holes if they, if they end up getting, if they're hollow, you know, if they don't fill up. So anyway, that's the plan. We'll see how they go with that plan. I can feel this resin starting to warm up already. Um, so we are going to have to work fairly quick with this. And I do want to get the resin in there when it's still fairly thin. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just pour probably half and half or thereabouts, doesn't have to be exact measurements. And I'm going to throw some pigment into each of these cups with the different colours and then we're going to pour little amounts of the, each colour in. To the mould and hopefully we can catch it all before it starts to go off on us. So that's the antique one and then we've got the solar gold beside it. Okay. And like I said, I was going to go with a green or, I mean, you could go different ways with this. You could put really bright colours in it so that it really stands out in contrast with the wood. Or you can put something else in it, like the gold, which is going to give it a little bit of a sparkle to it and a bit of an interest. Um, like I said, you could go really in your face and put some really bright colours in there as well, like purples and blues and reds and but um, I think if we want a nice subtle sort of a look, I think the golds are probably going to be better with the wood. And I think the wood's going to get sort of lighter and darker colours in it as well. I don't think it's going to go um, totally dark. And that's still a little bit transparenty, so I want to get a little bit more of the antique in that one. Actually, it's not too bad, but we'll get a little bit more in. <clears throat> Amber, how are you? Welcome back. That's better. So now we just want to make sure we get the mix correct and that the powder is all well dispersed through the resin and dissolved. The resin is warming up really quick. Um, I'm surprised at how hot it's starting to get because normally it takes a while for it to start really getting warm but I've got warmth in these already tonight. So um, like I said we're sitting on 27 degrees Celsius at the moment and it's six o'clock in the afternoon or actually it's probably about quarter past six, 20 past six now and we're still sitting on 27 degrees Celsius so it is really quite warm but it's the humidity, the humidity is up through the roof. We had a little shower this, earlier this morning and that's been enough to make it really clammy and sticky. So. Um, yeah. So the extra heat, I think, because I haven't worked with the epoxy and, and um, extreme heat. Because I think when we started streaming was about six months ago. So 
Um, we would have probably went through our winter and spring, but not actually summer. Okay, so like I said, I want this to, um, I'm gonna have to pour these in fairly slowly so that I give the, uh, give time to the mold for the, um, the air to come out. And hopefully I've got the timber in the correct way to allow that to happen. But we'll soon see. And if we've got to top it up again later on once it's cured, we can do that. That's no big deal. Um, they are still quite thin, the resins, but I think I'm going to pour them thin. And if they mix together, they mix together. I'm not overly concerned about it. All we're really doing is filling those cavities and trying to get a little bit of different colour in there and fill the voids. Razor, how are you buddy? Welcome back. So there we go. So I think that'll do the mixing. Jeez, I'll tell you what, they are bloody warm though. For such a short time just being poured, it's, they're uh, fairly hot already, so um, I think they'll be going off on us fairly quickly because it all cures on heat, so um, I think they'll start pouring. So you can see that in the shot, in the overhead shot that I've got up now anyway. And um, like I said, all I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to pour this in really, really slowly. And um, I'm going to really sort of open the mould up as well. And I'm just going to pour resin in anywhere, just nice and slow. And like I said, I want that resin just to slowly fill in and and force any air out. That's the big thing that I want to try and do, is force any air out of the mould. So we're just going to enter it, drizzle it in nice and slow and hopefully it'll just flow through those other holes that are in the blank on the underside. And I'd say we should have more than enough resin because um, that's enough resin that I've mixed up to fill one of those 90mm tubes. So. Um, but I'm just going to let it take its course and take its time to slowly fill up and hopefully push air out and then like I said once we get it under pressure anyway um, the pressure will force any air out as well but I want to try and get it in the pressure pot when the the resin is still fairly fluid so that it will force the resin into the, um, all the voids and cavities and like I said I've got about a 6-7 mil reservoir above the wood in this mould so um, hopefully that will give me enough resin in there that if it does fill into voids it won't go below the surface of the wood hopefully. I'm starting to see the resin starting to fill up the mould now, so hopefully 
there we go, see? Put in a little bit more of the dark stuff now. And the resin, I mean, it is thickening up, but it's, um, it's still reasonably fluid at this point in time. So, um, And like I said, hopefully the reservoir on top is going to give me enough resin that if there is any other holes and voids in there. Once the pressure forces it in, we don't run out of resin. And before I go too much further, I'm actually just going to squeeze the mould a few times, different directions, so that if there is any sort of air there that I see, I can see that's, there's air coming out of there, filling that up, and then you can see the resin run back in. I think we should be fine though, I think with the reservoir that I've got on the top that should give us enough to actually um, allow for the pressure to force it in. Hopefully. And then the excess that's left now, we're just going to put into one of these cups. So I'll put it into this one. This one's got a fair bit of colour in it, so we'll do that one first. And then we'll get this one here into the pressure pot, I think. So let's go with that initially, without spilling it hopefully. And we just make sure that it's sitting kind of level. We'll top that up a little bit. Hopefully that'll do it. And we'll get the lid on it and we'll put it under pressure. So that's the first one out the way, which was the easier one, the uh, ones we're going to be doing tonight. So get this under pressure quickly so that we um, force that resin in. Now that's open, we'll close that off. And we'll let that fill up. We'll get rid of that one and we'll pour this one in there now. Okay, that's, that should give us a, um, we'll see what it settles at. Must be a little bit of a leak, I think. So we'll keep an eye on that, because that's at 60 PSI now. But it's dropping a little bit, so we'll see if it stabilizes.
That'll do that. And that'll do that. And the rest can go in the bin. Goody! Right. Now we'll get rid of them. Now, um, get rid of that. So how are we all, all right? We're all good? First one done. Yeah, pressure's dropping, so... Um, that's better. Don't know why that is, but it seems to be holding up at that's at about um, 64, that's about 66 PSI. Right, um, let me just go back to here now. We'll go there and go settings. Just going to shut this down before it interrupts us. Okay, close and close. Okay. Well, it seems like we're all having a bit of uh, strange weather, either freezing cold, stinking hot, or blowing a gale. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's asking, or oh, Razor's asking about suggestions for removing a synthetic knot from a brush handle. My, the old steam, um, the old steam in really hot water sometimes does it, but um, it can take some time and some working to get the knot removed from the handle to soften up the epoxy, depending on what epoxy has been used, how, how long the epoxy has been in there, how hard it is. Um, but steam, steam normally, if you hold it over steam, um, and it does take a fair bit of doing, but if you hold it over steam, sometimes the steam will do it quicker um, and it'll soften up the epoxy to the point where you should be able to just pull the knot out. But if you can't do it that way, um, what I do with a lot of my re-knots, when I get, when I get re-knots, I don't do an awful lot of them now, but I used to do a fair few of them. But um, with the re-knots, I used to mount the handle back in the lathe and then I would, uh, I'd cut the bristles off the knot first and get it down as close to the top of the handle as I could, especially if the knot was no good, because then it doesn't matter that you're cutting it and wasting it. Um, so I'd cut all the bristles off to near the top of the handle, and then I'd mount the handle back in the lathe, taking care not to, um, to crush it or damage it or anything like that. Um, and I've got a little technique that I use where I put it in a little tube and I clamp the uh, clamp around the tube and the handles in the in, sorry, in the tube. Um, you can do it with uh, paper toweling as well. You can put enough layers of paper towel around so that it will grab the handle tight in the chuck but without damaging it. And then basically you can put in a fossil bit in the tailstock end and just drill the knot out. Um, so that's, that's the harder way to do it, but it's the way to do it if you can't remove the knot. But steam, steam's the way to um, to try and steam it out, mate. It's the only thing I can suggest to you if you don't have a lathe and not able to put it on the lathe. Um, so yeah, that that's one of the ways you'd need to do it, mate. Um,
TF Custom Follicles? What are you talking about? Yeah, the gold should look nice in that timber, I think, actually, mate. So, um, especially if we get a bit of the dark and a bit of the lighter stuff in it as well, um, hopefully. So, um, yeah, hopefully it turns out. Hopefully we get resin into every, every hole, every crevice. Um, obviously, under the pressure, um, hopefully we should. Still got a little bit of a leak, so I'm having to keep putting a little bit of air in it. <laughs> now I think it'll be a fairly short stream tonight, uh, Amber, with the casting, it usually is. I should actually move that screen over too, shouldn't I? I should put you back to there, at least you can see what's going on. Not much at the moment, I'm reading, try and catch up in the chat and see what's going on with everybody with the weather. And Oh, okay, so it's one of the R400 handles, the aluminium ones, yeah? Um, mate, you should be able to steam that out, no problem then. Um, because the aluminium will take the heat, no problem. Um, you shouldn't have any issues with that. So I would just get uh, get something that's, you know, whether it's the kettle or whatever, get, get a, a bit of steam, something that's going to give you steam. Even if you've got to boil it over a pot or whatever, and just have something to hold the handle, because it will get hot. Um, but if you can get that over steam, mate, you should be able to get the knot out an aluminium handle, no problem. It's more the resin and the, um, the acrylics and timbers, timbers and that that you can damage with the steam. But with the aluminium one, mate, you should be able to get that, no problems at all. You should be able to get that out um, nice and easy with the steam, I'd say. Oh, I see, I've got you now, Brett, I've got you now, buddy. All right, let's think about what we're going to do with one of these other ones, eh? Um, I might try this new Purple Passion with something else. We might do... Um, should have got a knife, shouldn't I? Or scissors. This was one of those new ones that I've got, the Purple Passion. We might give that a try and see how that comes out. Put that over there for now. Um, and I'm trying to think, oh yeah, we've got the Orchid Purple as well, which is a slightly different one, but I think we'll, um, we'll take the covers off them. Um, I think we'll only use the one of them though, because they're fairly close as far as colour, as you, well, slightly different, but you can see them there. Um, and um, oh, we might chuck in a little bit of purple and a little bit of, um, a little bit of purple and a little bit of maybe wildfire or something, eh? Um, and maybe a bit of clear. I think. So we'll go with the um, we'll go with the purple passion. We'll put the uh, orchid purple back for now, and I think we'll do. We'll get another mixing cup, and I think what we'll do with this one is we'll use one predominant color which we'll leave in that cup, and then we'll have two smaller cups with the other colours in them. So I might, well actually we'll probably need three. So I'm going to pour a fair bit of clear into this one too, okay? So we'll leave the clear in here and we can do the colours in these ones I think. Alright, and then we'll just have to see how we go because the pressure pot, um, with that big square chunky mould, um, the pressure pot will only hold so much too, so um, we'll have to just keep an eye on that one. Okay. 
And as I mentioned earlier, there's no problem pouring the resin tonight because the heat has made it light water. We'll get rid of that, those golds. And we'll put in our hardener now. That's the hardener. We'll get the lid on the other one. And we'll give this a good mix up. No worries, Brett. Yeah, the resin's mixing up real easy tonight as well. Like it's um, it's clear already, and I've just started mixing it. You know. Just must be the heat. And I can feel it again, it's already starting to generate a, a little bit of heat. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna have to get myself one of those little mixers for the battery drill. Although it's just something else to clean and something else for resin to stick to, isn't it? Right, let's have a looky at that. So we'll stick that there for now. I'm going to put um, so much in this one. So much in this one. So much in that one. We'll go a little bit less, I think, in this one. And we'll give us more clear. So that'll be the clear. And then we'll get our colours now. So I think we'll go less of the purple. So we'll get a little bit of purple. Should be more than enough purple. Get rid of that one. We'll go. Oh, it's a paste one, this one. Okay. I wasn't sure what it was, whether it was going to be a powder or it's a paste. So um paste are normally fairly strong. So we'll put the paste into that one there. And then we'll go liquid fire. There's the purple. some liquid fire. Uh, 
And let me see what I've got. It's gold. What have we got? And I'm going to chuck. Some holographic into the clear. <clears throat> and we'll see what we get out of this thing. Eh? Out my box of goodies there. Right, we better get mixing. So I'll put you on to the overhead shot. So we've got the liquid fire happening there. this pasty one a bit of a, a mix up. It's a sort of a different colour to what I thought it was going to be. Sort of more milky, um, like a milky pigment. Purple passion. Anyway, We'll see how we go. It's all just a case of playing and experimenting and trying different things. And sometimes the things that you think are going to work don't work. And then sometimes the things that it goes the other way. Look at that. So we'll get a mould ready. We'll get all these around. I might end up putting a paper towel down on that too so that uh, when we do get drips and spills it doesn't go everywhere. You can see that on the overhead shot okay. So we're good there. And I think what I'll do here, just for something different, I think I'll pour the um, clear with the uh, holographic in it. I think I'll pour that in, in one hit straight into the uh, tube. And then we'll start drizzling the colours over the top. And we'll see what kind of effect we get in the handle from that. Or in the casting, I should say. Handle blank. 
check that. Yeah, we're still on 60 psi, so that's good now. It seems to have sealed itself, whatever it, whatever it was leaking before, I don't know. Unless it was just the lid getting pressure on it. Okay. Geez, this is getting heat in it. So it seems to be the larger the quantity, the more heat generates quicker. Geez, that holographic's nice, eh? Hey? You just can't get um, the camera to capture how nice the holographic looks, unfortunately. It's just playing uh, amber really, just picking some colours that you think might go together and sometimes you want the, um, the contrast in colours and you, know, you just never know sometimes and then you, you, sometimes you don't know how they're going to mix the colours, how the, each of the colours are going to react to each other too. So. Um, but that's getting pretty hot so um, I'm not going to leave it too much longer because I think we'll get caught out just with the heat. And it'll start to gel on us and then we'll be in trouble. So what I can do is I can pour this one straight into here now. Because that's the way I want to do this one. Oh, maybe not quite. Oh yeah, that'll be alright. Yeah, that'll be alright. And then we'll just drizzle the colours into the top of that now. And if this turns out, the clear with the holographic will be to the bottom of the handle and then the coloured sections will be to the top where the knot's going to be. And I'm hoping that we can drizzle some of the colour down at the holographic as well and then see what sort of outcome we get with that. I'm hoping it doesn't just sit on the top basically. Which I don't think it will. I think it'll it'll fall in and blend, but hopefully it won't make it all the way to the bottom. But we shall see. So yeah, so the paste pigment is quite strong, like it's solid colour. It's got no shimmer or anything in it like the other ones have, so they ones will actually put the shimmer into this one. And it will just give you that slightly different look as well within the handle, being a solid colour. And the others having the, um, the shimmer being more pearlexy looking colours. Yep, yeah, and we're going to start pouring these now. So we'll get them ready. And the blues, just the contrast, just to give us something different in amongst there. So um, here we go. So just little amounts, just drizzle it in. Whatever ends up, ends up. A little bit of blue.
So we're still getting some of the holographic coming up into the colours as well. Get a bit more blue in there just to so as it's coming up we're getting more and more color and less and less of the holographic um, but we should still get a little bit of holographic up into the top top area of the handle as well and I'll be um, really interested to see how the bottoms turned out So we're getting pretty close to these ones going off in the little cups. Now that blank's going to end up a little bit short. That's not to worry. I'll get the stick in there and just scoop out what I can. So I could have done with just a little bit more resin, but that's that's all right. The blank will still be okay size-wise. Just means I'll have less holding in the chuck. That'll do it. A little bit of resin on my fingers this time, not a lot. And that's that one done. So we'll throw them into there along with them. Along with that. Get another fresh one from my hands. That goes in the bin. And this one will go in the pressure pot. So what I'll do is I'll um, just get rid of these at the under my feet. We'll release the air. Come on pressure pot, do your thing. Release. Release. What's there? It goes. I think the um, valve must be starting to stick. Oh, that's where it came from off the side. I must have, um, I wondered how I got more resin on my fingers. Spilt some down the side of the, uh, the mould. Not to worry. Um, okay. Yes, we are getting air out of it, so um, there's a few bubbles. 
So I don't know what's going on there. But we'll get this in. Oh. And we'll put it back under pressure. I think there must be air trapped in that mould, so I don't know how successful that one's going to be. Probably be better if it was cast in a vertical mould and supposed to lying down mould, I think. But we shall see. The last thing I want to be doing is turning it, in, turning it into holes, you know. Not that it's a big deal because we can always cast it again, but um, it'd be nice to get it right the first time. But I think it might need to be a vertical mould, and I don't have a vertical mould to take blocks like that, so it would mean I'd need to make one. Um, so yeah, so we'll have to see how we go on that one. See how we go with that. Right, what am I missing out on? Other than that um, noisy compressor. Um, yep, yeah, liquid fire is nice. Especially when you put it in with that purple and the um, and the other purple colours, it, it comes up quite nice. Um, I'll be curious to see how the holographic impacts on each of the colours too, because if that holographic mixes in with some of the other colours, we're going to get a lot of sparkle in the different colours as well. Um, and then hopefully we'll have some clear still in there, which will give the, uh, the whole handle or the whole blank, it will give it a lot of depth as well. We, where you should have colour and clear with holographic and holographic will be in the clear but it might be in the colours as well so it should, should be quite nice. Yeah, you'll need to get it really hot Razor. It'll need to be really hot to soften up the, um, the epoxy and then um, <coughs> And then it might take a little bit of force to get it away, but once it starts, once it starts to come away, it should come away okay. The Bob Ross of resin pouring, eh? Right, um, yeah, well, I've got one of these ones to turn. Uh, where did I? Where's the other? I thought I had three there. Oh, it's up here. I've got one of these ones to turn for someone too. That's going up. This one, again, I think it's going over to the States, um, which is uh, sort of like a hot pink with a, um, oh, what would you call it? It's a blue, but it's not a, like a dark, royally type blue. It's quite a, but it's a um, shimmery type mica powder. Perlexi type powder as well um, and epoxy but I've, I have done a few of these it's amazing how um, how the guys like that one I, I can't remember what we called this one originally I think it called it bubblegum or something and um, just with that pinky color through it but um, yeah so I've got that one to make for a guy and that'll be going over to the state actually no it won't be it'll be going down to Sergeant to have a, a rhodium fitted in it so um, and then I think this one, which I've got a 28 mil rhodium assigned to at the moment, but the 28's actually coming out of that one now and going back into my stock, um, because he's actually getting a 24 mil rhodium put in this one here, which is black with the orange band down it. Um, so that'll be another one that'll be turning very, uh, very shortly as well. And then once I think, I think once I get rid of those handles. Um, I think that's me pretty much caught up. So, the, well, oh no, I'll tell a lie. I have got another timber one. Um, guy bought, um, it was a timber base 
with uh, resin top on it and he wants another one very similar but different colours and different, different wood this time. So he wants the wood to be really dark and um, blackish dark and then I think the top was to be yellow gold, yellow and gold um, where the other one was the timber one. You might have actually seen it. Um, I think it was, um, oh, it was, it was, I think it was black and clear was the top section of the uh, the handle, and the bottom hat, the bottom part was um, brown Mali barl, I think it was. So yeah, so they're ones that I've got a got a ton. Um, Brett's one's done. Tom's one was done, that was the Ice Fusion. Rainer's was done. That's the guy that ordered the Red Blood and the Rusticate and I haven't been able to get in touch with him for the last week, two weeks. The handles are finished sitting there, so if he doesn't come good within another week or two, then those handles will go up for sale. Um, and Jeff's the fella that I've got to do the other one for with the barrel and the resin. Sam's is this black one with the orange stripe in it here. And then I haven't heard from Dino in a long time, so um, I'll either have to touch base with Dino and see if he still wants to, to um, go ahead with that one, or if he's um, not continuing on. So yeah, so that's where we're at. Um, looking at that one when I had the pressure pot open, I'm not holding much hope that we're going to be um, that we're going to be good with that timber one. I think we're going to end up with uh, poles and bubbles in it. So, but we'll see anyway. We'll, we'll we'll soon know once we start. And if that's the case, I won't be doing the other the other five. Um, I'll have to get a vertical mold set up for them so that I can do them vertically that way. And that way, it should allow the uh, the resin to to fill up. The way I've done it, if there's holes on the bottom that don't go all the way through, then the resin the air is going to get trapped in there. And then of course what will happen is it will stay there and then once we put it under pressure, the pressure is going to try and force the resin in and force the air out. But as the resin starts to cure, it can also trap bubble in there. So um, I think that's maybe what's happened with that one there. So I'm not holding a lot of hope in that one at this particular point in time. But I think um, if we can get, it, get them into vertical, um, into a vertical mold, then I think we'll be as good as gold then. So right, we'll have another ply. Um, <clears throat> you did see all the new ones that I got, didn't you? But these are more so, oh, we could probably try casting one or two of these. You did see all these ones that I got, didn't you? The, the flake ones. Um, so like that one. That's what's called um, Silver Halo. So very different to the other stuff I've got, which is a really fine crushed probably the same stuff but crushed. Um, I think where this would come into its own is if we um, if we done say like a clear base and then we sprinkled this on top and then poured more clear on top and then maybe colours on top and I think this would look quite nice. That's the silver halo. I've got quite a few of these in different colours. Um, this one's azalea. So it's much the same kind of stuff, but just bigger flakes in Azalea. And then I've got, that's another, that's another silver halo, I think. I did get two or three of certain ones, so that I've got heaps of it to play with. Yeah, that's another silver halo. I think this one might be another Azalea. Yep. And then we've got this one, which is electric blue, which is a little bit finer than the other ones, but still, um, still nice. And bigger flakes, not like the, the powdery glitter halo. That's another, another blue one, electric blue. Um, this one's a bit finer, and um, this one's Prince Purple. Um, so it's a really deep purple, this one. So we could try something with um, with those. And then this one's, I like the look of this one actually. This one's called um, Rainbow Unicorn. It's 
So this one and the silver halo are quite light to look off. You can't really see much in this one when I hold it up to the camera like that, but it's actually quite nice. It has got still got a lot of colour in it, but it's a very different look to the silver halo one, which is um, that one. So I think they're going to look quite nice as well once, once they get cast into something. But anyway, um, we might, we could try something with Aang. Uh, maybe this, maybe the silver halo. We could try something with. What do you think? Maybe if we do more of a, oh, I'll tell you what I could do. I could actually do a clear blank. Um, we could do a clear blank and we could chop a section off which could then become the top of a handle and the rest could be the bottom of a handle and then we could put a colour top on top of the, the longer part. Um, the other thing I could do with these would be to um, apply them to timber or a piece of barrel or something and then cast it. Because they are just like sort of flakes, you know. Um, they're just like a coarse flake, as you can see there. I don't know what the material is, but it's really colorful. It's like little shards of something. All right. Well, look, we might um, we might pour another one. So let me pour some more resin. I don't know if those flakes would sink to the bottom. Um, if they were put into um, clear. I'm not sure. So we could experiment a little bit with this one using those other materials and we can see what eventuates oh just a little bit of too much there which could be an issue when I um, when I'm getting that sponginess. Because they do say that if you put too much hardener in it, the, um, the epoxy, it goes more gel, jelly-like. Right. So let's just mix up some clay here. And you see how my uh, waste ones come up? just by pouring the waste into there. Very different, isn't it? And that can come out and be turned into a handle or um, or cut up and put into other handles in chunks, smaller chunks. Hey man, how are you buddy? Keep him out of trouble.
that. I think we'll um, we'll give it a good mix, so we know it's definitely mixed well. I. I'm wondering whether those flakes would sit. on resin and wouldn't sink into it. So what I'll do is I might pour some into the bottom of the mould. And then we'll float a couple in there and we'll see what it wants to do. And um, then we can play from there with the uh, choices. So what I'll do is I'll get a couple of um, small mixing cups up and we'll mix up a few colours as well. So like I said, this is going to be another sort of experimental trial and error one. Might pour a little bit more in actually. Right, and then I'm going to drizzle a few bits of this metallic -y flake in there, whatever it is, and see if it'll actually float. On top. And so far so good, it looks like it's actually lying on the top of the resin. I guess if I was to mix it, it would probably then mix through the resin, but I just want to try and get a layer like that and see what actually happens. So we'll sit that there, we'll sit that one there and just let that sort of sit the way it is there now. And then we're going to pour some more colours, but I'm also going to keep more clear. And again what we'll do is we'll pour clear on the bottom. Again. And then we'll add the colours nearer the top. Okay, so there's our three smaller ones. Now we'll pick out a few colours. And I'm thinking we might go... Um, a little bit of interference. Um, where's my mixing sticks? Sit that there. some interference colour which is interference violet and then I want
and um, and I'm going to go something totally opposite. Yeah, we still had a couple of little issues. Um, the last stream with YouTube, it started popping up the messages again, and the uh, the stream got a little bit uh, jittery for a little while, but not very long, and then it came good again. Um, so it's definitely a YouTube thing, I think, mate. Because again, I checked my internet speeds and everything was good. Um, my data rate up here hadn't moved. My cache hadn't started to try and play catch up or anything, so... Um, it was kind of weird, mate. It was kind of weird. But anyway. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a little bit more clear in here over the top of that stuff. Without trying to... Yeah, that's taking some of the flake into the bottom now. Which is... Okay. It's all experimenting. that going to go a little bit further and make this one really bright. Yeah, that is a nice blue, that one. That's a um, Pearl X blue. And this one here is like radioactive. This is um, Brett's Day Glow Green. It's like a real fluoro. Yep, 
Yeah, see, I'm going to have to stir that up now because those those flakes have all settled to the bottom, which is what I thought when it got mixed. They were sitting nicely on the top until I poured more clear in, and then you could see them actually mixing into the resin, but they've now settled on the bottom. So, um, not them all, but quite a few of them have. And the, f the problem with that is, is that most of that will get turned away. Um, because that's where the um, where the coin will be in the handle. But what I think I'll do is I'll probably end up pouring more clear in. That's mixed up, but I think what will happen is they'll settle to the bottom, I think, eventually. But I'll sprinkle a few more. Well, actually, what I'll do is I'll put more of the clear in first because I do want more clear on the bottom than, I, than I, anything else. Just so that we get the benefit of seeing that flake. And I will put a little bit more flake in it. And I'll probably end up having to just stir it up a bit, I think. Because um, the flake is going to the bottom once I... Um, it wouldn't surprise me if this all just basically settles on the bottom. But anyway, we'll see how we go. These are starting to warm up now as well, so I think we'll be getting to the point where we need to start thinking about pouring them in. It'd be nice if some of that sparkly stuff um, stay suspended in the in the clear resin. That'd be quite nice. That's what I'd like to happen. But um, I don't know how it's going to go once we pour these other resins in. But we'll we'll find out, won't we? One way or another, we will find out. So I'll just leave that sit there in case we need more. I might give that a little bit of a swirl because that's all clear and just the metallic flake but I do have a funny feeling that it is going to settle on the bottom unless the resin is starting to go off enough that it will suspend it right now we're just going to drizzle some colours in We are getting a little bit of the metallic flake 
floating around in the resin as well, so we may be okay. And I think the resin's starting to get thicker, so it's not sinking down as much as it would have done if we'd have poured earlier. And we're getting a nice swirly part of the colour in the top P. And we've still got some of the, um, there's still a couple of little bits of that metallic -y flake floating around in it. And the resin's starting to heat up because you can see the colours moving around on their own accord now as well. Now we'll get the spoon, the, the um, spatula and get as much of this out as we can. Orange out into there as well now. That's that one done. Get the rest of this in there. It's that one. Yeah, there's YouTube chucking up another error. That's what happened the other night and it cleaned itself up and it didn't come to nothing. Can't work it out. I'll see what they're saying shortly. Once I get my hands cleared up and get this in the pot. Um, and I don't think we've got any more clear left, so that's starting to gel off. And I think we'll call that one done. Just give my hands a wipe. that finished. Missed. Now we'll get the, get the air off. Get rid of these. Oh. 
as she goes. Yeah, this um, temperature here is certainly causing this resin to go off fairly quickly. Um, that um, mold that I've just poured is already boiling hot. <sighs> okay, we'll get this one in there. Okay, I'm just having a look in the pot and um, the gold one has sort of settled down but it's probably going to need more poured in there I'd say. Um, but anyway we'll get the lid back on it and we'll get that other one under pressure because the, like I said the resin is going off fairly quickly tonight. We might do one more and then I think we'll call it a night for tonight. So start thinking about some colours and if I've got the colours we, we'll um, see what we can do. Missed. Now it's telling me it's not receiving enough video. How unbelievable is that, eh? It's telling me I was sending too much before, now it's telling me I'm not sending enough. That'll do it. Okay. We'll do one more because I don't think I can get any more in the pressure pot. So, any preference for colours, anybody? Ah, grey dog's in the house. How are you, grey dog? Um, now what else do we have in here? We've got those ones, which is fine. Look what all these other ones. They're all rainbow purple. Mm. We'll try one of these, I think. Um, put all that back in there. Shut that down. Um, we'll open up one of these. Dee, 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 dee. Try one of these. They're a colour shifting one. Um, but we're going to have to pick a few other colours to go in there as well. So we'll get another paper towel. We'll sit that there. We'll get a couple of um, small cups again. And we'll grab another large one. And we'll use that. 
Right, we'll just pour the resin in. Snow, snow, snow. Snowmen and snowball fights and sledging. Um, okay, so this is a chameleon. This is a colour changing pigment, this one, and it goes from green, gold and purple. So we're going to put that in one of those little cups and we'll, we'll do a full cup of that. And then we need to pick some other colours to go with that, but nothing that's too overpowering. So, we could try some different, um, we could try a red dual blue, that's a dual red, with a, because we've got a few interference colours, that's an interference red, that's an interference, oh that's a dual red blue, we could try that. And with a green, gold and purple. That might be alright. We shall see. We'll soon find out, won't we? Aye. Alrighty. Let's make up another mix. And I think, like I said, I think we'll make this the last one for tonight. Mixing sticks, need a few. What are the point, Brett? Did you miss us? No, you never, because you were still listening, weren't you? Oh dear YouTube, what are you doing? What are you doing? Let me just run an internet speed test again. So it's not my issue again. Um, I've got 74.25 megabytes per second download, which doesn't really matter for streaming, it's the upload. And currently it's sitting on 31, 32, 31.14 for upload. So it's definitely not my internet, YouTube, sorry. I don't believe you. Ah, oh, now you switch back to excellent connection. Unbelievable.
right. So I don't actually need one of those cups, so we'll get rid of one of them because we're going to make the colour changing one the predominant one and then we're going to throw in an interference colour and we're going to throw in a colour changing and, and then there's a dual red blue that we're going to throw in as well which should give it a nice sort of an effect hopefully. So um, let's just pour these smaller ones now. So that's a small one and this one will just go half, maybe not even half. Yeah there we go, that'll do. And this one's going to be the um, the colour change. Actually, oh, maybe not. Maybe I'll go this one, the colour changing. Okay, let's see what we get. Right, that'll be the colour changing one in. Sorry if my head's in the way. Now I don't know if the colour changing will give a good effect because normally the colour changing pigments need to be um, applied to a dark surface. And that's when you see the full potential. But I'm hoping that we can get enough colour change in it. I mean, being honest with you, when you see it mixed up, it just looks like another interference colour or a, or a dual colour. Um, but you can see the colour change. In fact, I'm seeing it change more now that it's mixed up more. So this one was gold, uh, sorry, green, gold and purple. So we'll leave that one set aside for now. We'll get the next one, which I think we'll use. I think we'll go the interference red. No, the dual red, red blue, sorry. So we'll go red blue with this one, and then the main one will go with the lighter interference colour. And we'll see what we get out of that. Because I do want the um, colour changing one to be seen as well. I don't want it to disappear, you know. And I've got a funny feeling it might blending well with this one, which is the interference red. Right, let's get mixing. So this one's the dual red blue. Which as it gets mixed you'll see the blue tinges in it and you'll see the uh, the red. Yeah, really that um, color changing one. I mean it will change the way 
it'll change colour different ways the light catches it. Whereas these ones, you know, it only shows you sort of red and blue depending on how you look at it. Um, so they are they are different, they are a colour change, and like I can see that change in colour in front of me. I'm seeing the gold one minute, I'm seeing the green the next minute. I can't say I've seen the uh, purple too strong in it, other than when I was mixing it. But that could change once we start to pour. Now we do have, see I mean looking at this one here and looking at that one now, they look very, very similar. Um, this one was interference red, I can see the red in it, but it just looks more an interference colour, the um, colour changing one, but hopefully it will show different colours when it's in a handle. I'm going to let this one go a little bit longer because I don't want it just to mix straight together. Yeah, I can see the purple in that now. And the green. And the gold is in there as well. You can't see it. It is a little bit different to the other one, but this, um, this um, interference red is, it's sort of showing different colours as well. It's not just totally red. I mean, I can see green in that as well. But anyway, it is what it is. We shall mix them in and we'll see what we get. I wish that I'd put another colour in it now though. Look, I mean, there is pieces of software out there um, where you can live stream. And this equipment that I've got, I can actually live stream to multiple places. So I could live stream it to Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, uh, not Twitter, um, Twitch TV, um, Vimeo, um, any, any uh, streaming place but the thing is you've got to pay for it and they're not cheap and um, I don't want to do that because I can't really afford to um, pay for that kind of service because it's like a, normally a yearly subscription thing that you got to pay and um, just to be able to restream to all the different services you know and you can pick 
which ones you want to stream to, you just set it up on your, your device here, stream, and it's when it receives your stream, it streams out to everybody else at the same time. So um, you can broadcast in multiple places, but like I said, it's just it's another cost that I can't really afford. So um, that's why I've sort of stayed clear of that kind of stuff and just stuck with YouTube. Right, I think we're going to actually start to pour before this gets much hotter. And I think I'm just going to put in a little bit of this one, just so we get a tinge of colour, ready blue colour, here and there within the, the handle, because I think the handle is going to be fairly colourful but um, oh, 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 colourful but um, oh, 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 don't waste it. Might make an interesting handle this actually, especially if we can get the um, the colour pigment one, the colour changing pigment one. If we can get that playing a part in it, quite effective. But I think it's probably all going to end up blending in. Let's get right, let's get in it. Bolts. I might just have to 